Today we're talking with the first person to receive the Texas Broadband Hero Award, Teresa Burnett, who is the Executive Director of the Monahan's Chamber of Commerce. She joins us to discuss her work to connect her whole community to high-speed internet access, including the challenges she's faced and the progress made, and what other communities can learn from her experiences. Welcome, Teresa. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, quite an award that to, to get that was pretty, probably pretty exciting, huh? I still think I'm in shock. I'm, sti I'm still trying to absorb it all, and I, yes, totally. I, I'm just very, very excited. I'm very humbled by the award. You know, there, this takes a lot of work by a lot of different people putting in the efforts and to be able to receive the first one uh, in the state of Texas is just, uh, it's so humbling. I'm so appreciative. Let's talk a little bit about your role with the Chamber of Commerce as the executive director. Share what you do in that position and how you approach it. Well, as the chamber in a small community, we serve a lot of different purposes. We're not only the chamber, but we're also the Convention and Visitors Bureau. So we're, we're kind of challenged with the uh, job of bringing events and bringing people and doing tourism in our community, along with working with what chamber work does. Uh, I love it all, but I am passionate about what the true chamber represents. I love to be able to figure out things and bring projects and do things that are gonna help businesses succeed in our area. If we bring a business in, we want them to be successful and we don't want them to go away. Of course, with the oil and gas industry, it's a little bit difficult, but we are, we are still seeing that we've still got lots of businesses surviving out here. So we work on things like broadband and education and transportation and uh, things that we can do to market our businesses for their success and to let people be aware of the services that these businesses bring. So let's set the scene a little bit for our audience, um, which is, is part of the Texas Tribune Rural Symposium. Um, Monahans is located in Ward County in the Permian Basin of West Texas. And in the, at about 2010, the town's population was only, it was about 6,900 people. That right. has more than doubled in less than 10 years, mostly because of service and oil companies, which you mentioned. Uh, the town really has experienced some growing pains on the infrastructure side of things that needed to support that growth. Can you expand a little bit about that, um, the challenges of trying to tackle that? Absolutely. You know, when you come from an economy that wasn't very good and then all of a sudden you've got this boom just pushed on you, you know, you find out really quick that you don't have near the adequacy to double your population and be able to serve the community and the people that are here to the best of your ability. You know, you have problems like not enough electricity, not enough uh, water sewage uh, disposals. You don't have enough landfill space. Uh, your roads are not equipped for the amount of transportation and truck use that we have in the community. So with all of that being put together and then the trash, I mean, it's just amazing how much trash can accumulate uh, in a day's time. So along with enjoying and being appreciative of the boom and a good economy, you have so many challenges during this time. Uh, also, you're trying to get the people that come in to have a buyback into your community that want to be a part of it. So that's a challenge of being able to educate the people on what you're about, what you expect, and what kind of a community you are as far as um, increasing the quality of life. What in, in that type of setting where you're seeing this massive growth and um, trying to tackle that as a community, uh, what, what is the importance of broadband in this setting? Well, it, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, when you're trying to recruit community or you know companies to come to your community, you want good quality companies that are going to be able to come in and, and help with the community survive and uh, be able to help your industry. Uh, we have lost many companies in our community because we didn't have so, uh, sufficient enough broadband internet services to operate their high quality technical needs. Um, so that is a huge problem. Also with being a rural community, you don't get as much attention paid to you as the cities do because that's where most of the growth is and they're trying to get 
you know, the adequate supply of broadband to the cities. So you're out there really fighting and pulling and trying to plead your case as a rural community to get the services that you need and, and expect that here also. I'm going to quote you here. Uh, we, you and I have done a couple of interviews through the years and you've been working on this problem. You said before, and I'm going to quote this like I said, our medical field depends on broadband. Our education depends on it. Even our sense of security depends on it. We are the number one leading area for oil and gas production in the world. It's an issue of national security. I feel like internet is that important and that vital to our community. Share why you think that that is so important and why you view it as a national security issue. Well, because I feel like we're out here, we are the center of the uh, Permian Basin. We are the number one area for oil and gas production in the world right now. Um, and I figure, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, you know, if, if you want to hurt the United States, if you want to hurt the rest of the country, um, then you're going to go where the source of the energy is. And, and I feel like that we, we are a key target area and that, you know, we, we have not been overlooked because we know that we're being talked about nationally as far as being the number one oil and gas producing area. Um, so with that being said, if you wanted to cripple the United States or the world, this would be a, a number one spot, in my opinion, to do that. So with us needing and more services and broadband in our area, um, I just feel like that it is a necessity that we are connected to the world, that we're connected to the United States, that we're, you know, connected and have that connectivity on a 100% basis at all times. Uh, I just really feel like that that's, that's our goal and that's a need that we have in the Permian Basin right now. Do you also see it as a safety issue, whereas if you have that access, uh, if there was an issue or if there's problems there that there's a better response time? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you had high speed internet, the broadband that we need and everything, I mean, it's just a matter of clicking on and getting somebody and letting somebody know, you know, what our need and what our emergency is at that point in time. Um, like I said, broadband internet used to be a luxury. It used to be something that not everybody had, but you could get it and it helped with certain things like you know, browsing the web or online ordering or, you know, gaming or just different things like that. But it's not a luxury anymore. It is a necessity. It is something that everyone ought to have in their household, in their business, and in their community. Um, you're obviously very passionate about it, which brings us to, uh, we mentioned at the top of this interview, the Texas Broadband Hero Award. Uh, CN Texas, Connected Nation Texas, recently honored you with the first ever award for this in a virtual ceremony. I want to play some of that and listen to a couple of comments for those that, from those in attendance. Uh, so okay. we'll just pause for a moment for that. Uh, Teresa, we'd like to present you with the Broadband Hero Award. I think y'all deceived me just a little bit on this call, <laughs> didn't you? Uh, Teresa has been the heartbeat of this broadband initiative since day one, and it hasn't always been easy. Teresa truly exemplifies that West Texas spirit. I, I, I'm humbled. I don't even have the words. Thank y'all so much. The list of people in attendance truly demonstrated how you positively impacted the lives of people in Monahans. They were public officials as well as funders, community leaders, coworkers, friends, families. During that ceremony, we heard about how much time and effort you've put into this work to expand broadband. Uh, why, do you, why do you have such a passion for it? Why do you feel that you have to keep pushing forward and you feel motivated to do this? Well, it's kind of funny when, when uh, Connected Nation approached me and the Stillwater Foundation approached me about getting everybody together to talk about needing more broadband and internet in our community. I was like, okay, I'll call this meeting together, but I, I do not know anything about broadband. Never thought that I would know anything about broadband, but have learned tons about it and still don't know everything about it. But as I, I got into it and I did the research and 
the things that have happened lately with the pandemic and having to educate our children at home and in our area with oil and gas and the emergencies emergencies that we have, you know, trying to get ambulances and air flights and to save lives with the, the medical part of it. Um, it. It's just every time you turn around, my business is here. If you get a line cut, they go down. We don't have internet. We don't have, we, they cannot run their businesses because a restaurant at noontime and people just pay by credit card now. You know, people don't carry cash anymore. So our businesses, they can't even serve their people at lunch to be able to take their payment, which presents a major problem when our businesses are shut down. When you can't make reservations at the motel, if you have a catastrophe and you can't get to your insurance claim agent, you know, to get, you know, your claims done. I mean, it affects every ounce of your life. Um, we had one day, uh, a line cut here a while back and we were down for over a day. You know, during that time, it hit me personally because I had a mother-in-law taken to the emergency room. I have elderly parents here that depend on me to be able to get to them, um, to get them to the hospital or the doctor if need be. Uh, which we've had to call ambulance many time of, times for my parents. Um, I'm passionate about it because if those are just a few things that affect me, can you imagine the things that affect the whole community and persons in their own home and their lifestyles and their needs? Caregivers, oh my goodness. You know, it's a matter of saving someone's life. It's a matter of keeping a business in operation. As, as you've been um, tackling this issue, which is a big issue, what are some takeaways or advice you would give other leaders in rural communities about um, tackling the issue of expanding broadband access? Well, the number one thing that, that everybody needs to realize that this is not an easy fix and it's very expensive. And it's not something that you can do on your own. This is not something that, that, that I've gone out there and just worked on. Let me tell you, I have a whole network of people that I work with that have the, the means to find some funding for this. Um, it, it takes everybody. It takes your community. It takes your, my state representative, my state senator have been awesome in helping. Connected Nation has been a wealth of information. Um, the trust that people like the Permian Basin Area Foundation, the Stillwater Foundation, the King Foundation, that have put in our community for our efforts in taking care of this. So the number one thing that I can tell anybody is don't give up. This isn't gonna be simple. simple. It's not gonna be a quick fix. It's gonna take time and it's gonna take patience. That's a good piece of advice. Um, just a couple more questions and I'm going to let you go, Teresa, because I know you're busy. <laughs> uh, what would you like to see lawmakers do, either at the state level and federal level or one or the other? I, I just know that there needs to be some public funding. There needs to be some, some bills, some laws, whatever passed that can help a community financially. I'm not saying that they should fit the bill on everything because I believe everybody needs to be responsible. But I just feel like that this is one of those policies that fits up there with healthcare, it fits up there with transportation. It, uh, it has so many direct impacts on our community right now. And of course, educating our, our youth of today for the future. Um, there needs to be some funding put in place. There needs to be some restrictions, maybe kind of limited a little bit that helps with permitting and being able to get some of this stuff done. Um, there's a lot of permits. There's a lot of legalities that stand in the way when you're trying to get this done. Um, but I just feel like that there's got to be some help in the funding area. Um, it, and I, I know that you have to be accountable for that also, but there's got to be some funding put in place by our federal government and by our state government to help with, with any of this that's going to happen right now. Um, and finally, what would you want, not just people in urban parts of Texas, but across the country to know about rural areas and the importance of supporting them and 
um, these small communities, what they mean to people? Well, you know, in everything that I, I do, I believe that it takes partnerships to make something happen. Uh, I believe in something as big as broadband, that we're not just an individual rural community out here fighting for that. We are a nation fighting for that. Um, that what benefits us will benefit the rest of the state, the rest of the area, the rest of the nation. This is, you know, this is something that impacts us all. And I believe in working together in partnerships and putting this together uh, for the benefit of all. Well, thank you, Teresa, for all your hard work to help people and businesses within your community. We really appreciate it. I know you're having an impact because I heard it during the <laughs> award ceremony. People love you and love the work that you're doing to help them. So thank you. Thank you, and I appreciate everything that y'all are doing because I know that y'all are in the trenches fighting right along with me. I know that there's lots of work being done. Again, I cannot thank the Texas Rural Funders. I cannot thank Connected Nation enough, the Stillwater Foundation. There's so many that if I tried to name everybody that I would forget somebody. But again, just remember, this doesn't happen by yourself. It takes everybody working together and pulling together for the benefit of this, this project.